Hello, this is Rita Liu and you're watching The Shift. And what's The Shift about? We're talking about sustainability and everything that covers uh, under that, whether it's ESG or just sustainability development goals. Now, on 3rd November 2021 at COP26, the IFRS Foundation Trustees announced the creation of the International Sustainability Standards Board, or ISSB. On 26 June this year, the ISSB issued its inaugural standards, the IFRS S1 and S2, ushering in a new era of sustainability-related disclosures in capital markets worldwide. Here in Malaysia, the FTSE for Good Bursa Malaysia Index constituents are selected from the constituents of the FTSE Bursa Malaysia EMAS Index, screened in accordance with the transparent and defined ESG criteria. The index has been designed to identify Malaysian companies with recognized corporate responsibility practices, expanding the range of the benchmarks, benchmarks for the FTSE Bursa Malaysia Index Series for the Malaysian markets. Kenanga Investment Bank Berhad is one of the 98 public listed organizations listed in that index to date. Now, why are standards and reporting important and how do you begin? I'm here with Group Chief Sustainability Officer and Head of Group Marketing Communications, Kenanga Investment Bank Berhad, Tuas Saping. Good to have you here, Saping. And, you know, we see all these standards and all that, and maybe some people are confused. I'm a little confused, and but it is important, right? It is important so that... Um, people know who they're dealing with. So, uh, so congratulations for getting and staying right uh, in the index. So, has this journey of sustainability been by design or default since it's not mandatory, right, to get in there? First of all, thank you so much for having me, Frida. Um, for us, I would say it's a little bit of both. Okay. Um, Kananga is an investment bank, and we are public listed, so. By virtue of that, we are actually regulated by all three regulators, right? So the Bank Negara, Bursa uh, Malaysia, as well as Securities Commission. And our regulators, like regulators around the world, uh, have been emphasizing sustainability for a while now. Mm. And by default, uh, so we've been on the sustainability track the last couple of years. Mm. Uh, the design part kicked in for us, um, I, I would say two and a half years back, okay. uh, when internally we started talking about you know, the need to really expand the scope of our sustainability, to really go beyond regulatory uh, compliance, right? And to push for greater transparency, disclosure, accountability. And because we are public listed, it was very natural for us to look to FTSE for good mm. and their requirements. And that's what we did. Okay. And we sort of poured over, you know, almost 200 indicators um, that's part of the requirement that was relevant for us. Uh, but the great thing was when we did that, we actually realized that a lot of what was required mm. uh, was actually embedded within our practice already. Okay. okay. So what we needed to do really was to harness the right data and to make sure that it's published in the public domain right. in a digestible manner. So that's what we did. Um, and a year into our accelerated program, uh, we released our first standalone sustainability report that was, uh, I think, March, April last year. Mm. And in the same year, in December, we, we were included onto the index. Oh. You know? yeah, so. I'm just thinking what you just said, 200 criteria, right? And, to, yeah. and, and a lot of things, I guess, were already in place. But then, okay, we need to fine-tune here and there. And for people who don't know, your company is already 50 years. Correct. We were right. actually founded in 1973. So. Founded by a woman. Yeah, absolutely. Right? Yeah. So you've got one sorted in terms of the agenda, agenda yeah. right? <laughs> absolutely. Now, okay, so how does Kananga evaluate the environmental aspect and its connection with climate? Uh, when you think of a, you know, a financial institution, right? How do you connect that with the E side of things? I, I get that question a lot, right? actually, Frida. Yeah, because a lot of them say, you know, you're a bank, you, you guys are not in manufacturing, you're not releasing plumes of CO2 into the atmosphere, mm. so what can you do to decarbonize? Right. Uh, it's a fair question. And um, it's actually, when we look at the answer, it's in two folds, mm. two parts. First part of it, which is the most straightforward, is what we call at the enterprise level. And so okay. that is us really looking at our carbon footprint as an entity right. within our premises. So, for example, we operate out of Kananga Tower, which is our HQ on Jalan Tun Raza. We've got about 20 branches nationwide. So what we do is we manage and we track our carbon footprint of our enterprise, okay. our entity, and we try to decarbonize as much as we can. So it's very much like managing, because we, are, we operate out of office buildings, right? Okay. So it's very much like managing your home. Um, and just like managing your home, the biggest source of energy consumption 
Do you want to take a guess? Aircon. A absolutely. <laughs> air, air conditioning, right? So, so, so then it's like, if you remember during COVID, when we were all stuck at home, mm. and we had our air conditioning running 24 by 7, and when we got the bill, it fell off our chair. So, <laughs> so that kind of scenario, right? right? So for us, at Kananga, in addition to the obvious, like we right. changed all our lightings to LED, which is something we've already done, um, we also work with this, this really amazing... Malaysian startup, climate mm. tech in climate tech, and mm. they're called Zog Group. Okay. So that's spelled Z O G, Zog Group, right? And they were founded by this bunch of really intelligent um, engineers. Right. And they've come up with a AI based, AI is so big these right. days, right? Yeah. AI based technology that allows your chiller system and your air conditioning to perform at an absolute optimal. Okay. So we've been working with them for two years now. And, you know, the results have been phenomenal. Um, the recent months, we are mm. clocking in up to 50% energy savings. Wow. So that's been amazing. So it's great for the environment. So we're doing our part right. to carbonize, but it also translates into cost savings, right? Right. So and you're working with a Malaysian startup? Yes, absolutely. It's Malaysian people. So that. Yeah, it's really amazing. Okay, I need to speak to these 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 folks, right? And it's, it's a great story and how... So little things like that, right? When you look, you change your LED lighting, you get the best in terms of uh, energy. Um, and, and so that's one way. Um, okay, so that's that's the, the E part, right? What about the, the social and governance aspects then, right? Mm. You know, how, how do you... Can you share some examples of what you all do in that area? Yeah, absolutely. But just just very quickly, mm. going back to climate as well. So mm. one aspect, obviously, is what we just mentioned. Yeah. But the other aspect to that, so just so I could just yeah, round yeah, it off, cool. don't mind. Um, just the other aspect to that really is us using our resource. And this is where the action really is mm. for institutions like mm. us, right? And that resource actually is capital. Okay. Okay. So as you know... Um, Globally, you know, there is a massive funding gap when it comes to ensuring we meet our 2030 United Nations Sustainability Development Goals, right? right? And that funding gap goes up to $5 trillion every year from now till year 2030. Okay. So because we are in financial, the financial system, so yeah. there is massive duty for us to make sure that when we capital allocate, we are channeling funding into, you know, the right businesses, we're catalyzing okay. the right sectors, whether right. it's renewables, whether it's, you know, carbon capture, they all require funding mm. and to help them scale. Mm. So that's actually our role as well. And that's what we've begun doing as well. We started screening our investments and our lending activities based on ESG mm. uh, lands as mm. well. And the idea is not to punish anyone or right. to penalize right. anyone, you know, but to identify those who are perhaps are falling short and, and work with them to improve their ESG score. Okay. So that sort of rounds up the both aspects of our impact on the climate. Right. Right. So yeah. there's what you can do physically. Like that's that's a, your scope one, scope two kind of thing, Absolutely, right? Absolutely, yeah. Okay, and then I guess also in terms of the the funds that you provide. Yes. You're moving in that area as yes, well. Yes, correct. So we're, we're screening we're screening invest investee companies on a based on an ESG lens. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's correct. So what do you do in terms of the social side? I think I'll go bit by bit in yeah, terms. Absolutely. Okay, social first. Um, in terms of social, um, like a lot of brands and companies out there, you know, DEI is a big mm. feature for us, diversity, equity and inclusion. And I think we alluded to that a little bit earlier, yeah. you know, that Kananga, despite the fact uh, we are uh, a financial institution, very male-dominated sector, uh, we were actually founded by Tengku Nozaki, a wonderful female entrepreneur. I, I'm not sure whether you've met her, but she's, she's wonderful. So for us, um, gender diversity, the tone of that was mm. set right from the very start, from the very top. Right. And you can really see that translate into things like our culture mm. um, or into things like, you know, our composition of our uh, male versus female uh, within our workforce. So we operate at a 51% female workforce. A lot of people find that quite surprising. Right. Um, and when we try even further into mm. details like um, gender pay ratio, mm. we were happy to see that it was almost at parity. Right. So, you know, I think but when you have the right leadership, the right culture, it translates into those kind of outcomes right. which we are enjoying. And I guess the, yeah. the people on the board, you would, have, you would need at least 30%. Yes. Right, of Absolutely. course, that would be the standards. Now, what about governance? Um, as a... Uh, bank, mm. we are again very highly regulated. Okay. Um, so governance is our mainstay. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> goes without saying, right? <laughs> right. But above beyond just meeting regulatory requirements, we're really 
proud of our flagship program. Uh, we call it Fraud Awareness Week. Okay. But essentially, it's actually an entire month dedicated mm. once a year uh, to you know raising awareness around fraud, right? Okay. Our anti-fraud for that for that matter. Mm. And it's it goes beyond just within Kananga. We rarely you know our professional bodies, mm. regulators, uh, other industry players uh, together you know uh, to promote awareness around it. So we have quizzes, we host international speakers, okay. and a lot of fun and games. And this year again, it's happening in November. I'll be sure to send you an invitation. Okay, okay so this <laughs> yeah. is this is the, the whole uh, educating the community at large, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Uh, customers to customers. Now, um, and again, of course, sustainability isn't and shouldn't be a department, right? How do you, I think this is one of the things, right? Um, how many thousands of employees? How do you get uh, all employees to come on board together? Mm. How do you communicate with them, mm. right, in your in your other portfolio as yeah. your communications uh, head as well. Yeah, um, absolutely. Uh, I think there's been a lot of emphasis, you know, people talk a lot about, oh, make sure you get bought mm. buy-in, you know, you get your senior management's uh, sponsorship on the event, uh, on, on your program, mm. right. Uh, and that's, they're not wrong uh, yeah. to emphasize that, um, but the truth of the matter is, after your budget's been approved, your plan's been approved, and the rubber really truly hits the road, right, you need to execute, you need to deliver. And yeah. that's, you know, without the support of the entire organization for something like sustainability, it mm. is just not possible. Okay. okay. Because at the end of the day, you need the manager on the ground to give right. you the data that you need, right. the stories that you can tell, you know, to update the policies to meet requirements. So we need to make sure that, you know, not only do we capture, you know, the attention of, you know, the board members or whatnot, you know, but the entire organization's hearts and mind has mm. to be captured as well. Right. And I truly believe to, the way to that really is to be able to articulate a compelling why. Okay. Okay, like, like why? Why is this data okay. important? Why? Why? And, and when they say, oh, because FTSE wants it, then you've got to be able to ask the why. Uh, the yeah, why yeah. is FTSE important, important right? right? So you've got to keep chasing the why. And, and only when you do that, people feel vested in the journey right. with you. And the objective really is that long after your interaction with them, mm. they, they continue to think about, oh, how can I participate? Oh, right. how, how can I contribute? You know, that, that's really where you want to get your employees. Okay. And, and also for us, I think it's also important that the experience for employees is very much 360. Mm. So you want them to come to office, to, uh, log on to the internet. So there's a quiz there. There's mm. something there for them to read. Okay. When they log on to a learning management system, there's a module there for them to, you know, capacity build at their own pace. Right. And, and also face-to-face -face is really important. So for us, actually tomorrow we're starting our roadshow for the first time we're going to partner my department right. we have dialogues with the data owners and the head of departments on sustainability and issues that's relevant for them right so the inter oh. internal roadshow yes internal roadshow internal yeah. roadshow and so is that kind of conversation right yeah. it's not just going to be at the top down footsie for good so what's it got to do with mm. me right yes right yes. so you have to get down to why why yes. why until it resonates with me as an individual Absolutely. as an employee of this organization now now of course obviously then your other stakeholders right and this is the part i know it's going to be challenging not just for your organization but every other organization would be your suppliers third party vendors right yes. under the scope three aspect right yes. So what's the progress with that? And, you know, um, what are some of the initiatives trying to get mm. them on board? Mm. That's, that's, that's a really tricky one, Frida. Um, you know, as a homegrown brand ourselves, mm. a very proud one, um, we do tend to work with other homegrown brands in our supply chain right. as well. Um, and most of the time, these are SMEs, mm. okay? Like it or not, sustainability it's not always front and centre for them, mm. right? Uh, you, we need to appreciate the fact that a lot of them are busy trying to keep the lights on, you know, the people within their teams are double-hatting and triple-hatting. So it's it's going to take time. Right. Okay, Rome wasn't built in a day. We, you know, we understand intervention is important, but we also understand patience is also very important right. here. Um, so we do, our ambition really is to partner them, just like how we work with our investee companies okay. to understand where they're at and to help them along that journey. So that is the plan. Mm -hmm. um, one thing we're really careful of as well is, you know, this whole conversation around just transition. Right. You want to, what we do not want is to pull the plug on a company because, you know, they're not meeting requirements, right. they don't have that policy, and then cause a negative repercussion. Yes. Right. I right. mean, they are supporting livelihoods, they're supporting yeah. the entire workforce, mm. um, and within them, they are supply chain, right? So we right. are really mindful of all of that. Um, but I must say, I think the one thing that's very encouraging is, you know, I see a lot of tools uh, and resources available now. Government agencies are doing a fantastic job, you know. For example, uh, SME Corp, I think they've launched this uh, PKS Lestari, mm -hmm. where it's designed specifically to help, you know, um, mm. 
SMEs on the, their ESG journey. So uh, it's a matter of time. I right. think we, we just have to be patient. Yeah. Okay. We can't give a, a deadline, so to speak. Yeah, I, I don't think we are we're, we're there yet. But I, I think people are starting to realise the urgency. So right. it's a matter of just you know working with them and at their pace, at, at their level. Right, unless yeah. we come to the top level policy-wise, you yeah. know, government-wise, by this date, right? Yes. So, but I think it's, you're right, you know, understand where they're at and then work with them on mm. that journey mm. and help them as well, right? Um, now, okay, I, I don't know whether this would be a fair question, but there'll be SMEs watching this thinking firstly. As you mentioned, expensive tedious, right? Uh, and that is the domain of you big companies, <laughs> right? So it's, it's, and probably I think it's reporting, yeah. right? So is that a, a, a complicated and expensive exercise when, you know, I guess if you can couch it mm. for them so they say, actually, you've got to get started or what, what can mm. you do, I guess, to get them started on that journey? Mm. Mm. I, I think Frida, um, this, this question of, of cost, right? Mm. Um, I, I think we need to really push past this paralyzing notion uh, and narrative that you know ESG is expensive, it's so complex, it's so difficult. Uh, only because I think the option to do a wait and see mm. has expired. Okay. Okay. It, it's, it's, it's really behind us. Right. The, the cost that you will need to get on board ESG right. Whatever that may be, mm. I can assure you. I can assure you, it's not going to exceed the opportunity cost that you will have to bear right. if you're not ready. Let, let's put it that way, okay? okay? If you're not ready for ESG, chances are your license to operate may be affected as right. regulations around it. We're already starting to yes. see that, right? Yes. Are tightening the regulations and expectation. If you're not ready, chances are you're going to miss out on capital. Right. Banks are starting to evaluate a certain way. So are investors. I think yes. we've just spoken about that. Mm. And if you're not ready, you're going to miss out on a whole generation of consumers who are ready to pay more right. for sustainability products, for sustainable products, yes. you know. And, and just one very clear example is in three months' time, the mm. EU mm. is putting in place what they call CBAM, right, Carbon Border Adjusted Mechanism, where if we, anyone who exports into the economy will need to do two things. One, disclose carbon emission. Okay. And two, possibly pay a tariff on it. Okay. So if you do not have clarity of your data, carbon data, you, you know, how are you going to okay. continue your business okay. with them? And Malaysia is an export-based right. economy, right? And that's three months from now. Yes, October. So you don't wait and see, you have to start. You have to start, absolutely. I think you should, you know, and then you know, run, don't walk, right? <laughs> yeah. um, okay, now, um, so also, so being seen as ESG ready is, should be seen as an investment rather than a cost. Yes, I think it's definitely an investment and the return may, may not be obvious and as immediate as one would expect. You know, right. it will come in many different ways, right? When you resonate better to your, with your employees, they right. may work harder, they may be more motivated. Um, you know, the return could come in a form where you can resonate better with your consumers mm. and they stay loyal with you, mm. you know, um, and, and so on and so forth. You know? Right. No, I was just, I was just uh, doing this exercise and I was talking to, to somebody about it and said, Look, we always have catering events, right? Yeah. We always have catering events with our com within with employees every year. Guarantee Chinese New Year, Raya, yeah. Deepa Bali, Christmas, yeah. right? You're just looking at who you choose to partner with in terms of your catering. Mm. You're already doing something, mm. right? So sometimes something as, as simp simple as that, as yeah. simple as that, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay, so uh, I would just say, you know, from your perspective, having worked for a corporate, but also understanding like SMEs, and you say. Don't wait and see, you know, and you've got to get started. But your advice to get started on this journey, the first step is? Wow. Mm. <laughs> okay. Um, you know, I've, I've been in corporate for over 20 years and sustainability the last couple of years. And in that space of time, I've done certification, you know, even as a company with won awards and, and all the rest of that. Mm. But I will never proclaim myself as an expert. You know, mm. in fact, I don't think anybody can. Right. How can we when the whole of humanity is trying to figure things out still, right? right. How do we get ourselves up from this existential crisis, right? Um, but, you know, the point is that we do not have to wait till we are ready. Right. I think the most important thing is to roll up your sleeves, get started, and right. keep asking questions. You know, the most important commodity that any sustainability practitioner yeah. must have is actually just a curious mind. 
Right. You know, keep chasing the why. Keep asking the why on the why. Even when the answer is obvious, especially when the answer is obvious, right? right. And because only when you do that can you get to the very bottom of how you and your business is impacting the planet and its mm. people. And only when you have a clear view of that can you formulate plans that are meaningful, take actions that are meaningful and make change that is meaningful. You know? Right. Yeah. Right. And I think like in your case, when you were saying that, you know, uh, this is Kananga and then we're like, OK, uh, for, see, for good. And then after that, OK, what do I do next? First thing, look at the 200 criteria That's right. and what we do. And that was just being curious and improving on that. Right. OK. Any any other last thoughts uh, around this, Ipping? No, just get going. Just get <laughs> going. Go, yeah. Uh, thanks for being here on the show. And of course, the Trust Ipping from Kananga Investment Bank. And you have been watching The Shift with Freedom News.